All right, folks, once again, my name is Lucy Riley with Ballots for Bernie, and I have the greatest pleasure today of introducing you to the funniest man on the Bernie campaign, my fellow Bernie delegate, number one seated delegate from CD10 out in um, Tracy, out in the Central Valley, my man, Manny Zabata! <laughs> It's a little uh, early to be funny, so, um, and that was a really quick intro, I don't think I was ready for that. So, uh, my name is Manuel Zapata, I am coming from Tracy, California, that's uh, a BART ride and a little drive over the hills in the Altamont. Um, I was a Bernie Sanders delegate, I am now an organizer and activist out in my area. Um, I know a lot of people here are, are activists, and, and I've actually come here to learn more about um, Elect election integrity. I'm actually excited to be here because no matter what the work we do on the ground as organizers and activists, none of that matters if we can't get people to the polls. And none of that matters if the votes aren't counted. So we need to make sure that our elections are held and uh, every vote counts the way that they were casted and, and we could uh, avoid some of the problems that we're currently facing. Um, so yeah, I'm working on a congressional campaign out there and some other fun stuff, so uh, this is a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, town halls, and a lot of speaking to people, so um, this is right up my alley right now. Um, so welcome everybody, uh, just, I want to drop a quick plug for all the people live streaming and watching me right now. Go to the NVR, nvrtf.org and give some money. It's very important. There's always big money against these kind of things. We need to get some money for these kind of things. They don't want your vote to be counted sometimes, and we need to make sure that it is. So please, do whatever you can to help us. I, right now, have the pleasure of uh, introducing our first speaker. Um, she's a member of the advisory board, or she's an advisory, advisory board chair for PDA. Progressive Democrats of America, and uh, she's also on the election issues organizing team for PDA. And she also is the founder of uh, California Election Protection Network. She is a stellar election integrity activist. Ladies and gentlemen, stand up, or sit down, but clap really loudly for the phenomenal Mimi Kennedy. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm standing up for you. Oh, I watched this live streamed yesterday. I was able to watch the beginning of it. So hi, everybody out there. And uh, stay tuned, because this is an education that we all need. Uh, we have some of the greatest colleagues that I know in this movement I've seen over the past 12 years, 14 now, some. And uh, there's elders in the room, and there's <laughs> Manny, and Ballots for Bernie, and so many others that are new faces that I know may know by now more than I do. But I am, had to be here to contribute what I do know and an overview. Um, I woke up this morning in LA to get on the plane, and a Bob Dylan song was going through my head, and it's Every Grain of Sand. It's one of his great moral masterpieces. And the part that was going through my mind is, don't have the inclination to look back on any mistakes like Cain. I now behold this chain of events that I must break. And that's what we're doing. It's a chain of events, and it's, uh, it's, it's control of democracy, repeated attempts in order to do nefarious things, including mass murder, that's all I can put it. And I think we're old enough now as a human race, and certainly as a country, to say this is self-destructive. And if we want to continue being a self-governing people that lives in peace, and enjoys this earth, we're going to have to self-govern with more wisdom, and it's certainly with the integrity of one person, one vote. 
And that is what is constantly being undermined in the visible ways of voter suppression and in the invisible ways that you are all talking about because here we are with the physicists and the computer scientists and Silicon Valley. They know what's possible. They don't all program. They're not all everywhere in 7,000 voting jurisdictions where now so much software is controlling whether you can sign sign in to vote and how your vote is counted, but they know the capacity of this stuff and people are worried. Good. So we could look back on our past mistakes, but we now behold this chain of events that we must break. And the other lyric there is dying voice within me reaching out somewhere, toiling in the idleness and the morals of despair. Well, we've been a little idle about democracy. And I was at a Code Pink peace event. You can't get more radical than Code Pink for peace, right? So I assumed every donor there was very hip to what we need to do to self-govern. And sure enough, some donor from the Democratic Party came up to me, was embracing me, thank you for your work. And then he said, yeah, but you know, we'll be, we'll be doing it from our phones. I mean, the technology is going to be phenomenal. In 10 years, this will all be uh, I believe he used the verb fixed, which I never do in elections. You bet it'll be this fixed now. But um, there is still so much education to do, and particularly those who can donate. You ought to be donating in this group, because they're the ones that are going to save democracy and help create world peace, which is what Code Pink is trying to raise money, their money for. So um, I, I want to talk about the fact that we're in a culture. This is a cultural problem, easy deceit. We have uh, gone back to American Idol voting and I pressed a button and now I'm gonna see if that singer I like wins. Gee, this was a fun hour of television. Gee, this was a fun campaign. Gee, says my boss Warner Brothers, this was a lucrative year because we got so much money for campaign ads. There's a lot of lying back and saying let things be as they are because Nice people are benefiting, and we're not going to screw you too badly. However, this latest campaign now, it's unmanageable. I play a 12-step counselor on TV. I've learned a lot about 12 steps, and that first step has to do with you admit your life has become unmanageable and that you need to be restored to sanity. And that's where we are as a nation. Even those who believed in the technology understand it's become unmanageable. It's an arms race. You may think you fixed it on this side, but somebody smarter fixed it over here, and then they fixed it here, and then you can't control in the good old way who gets elected anymore. So they're trying everything, and that's why it becomes whack-a-mole. Voter suppression, increased mail validating, and now not don't audit those votes, or uh, voter rolls, online voter rolls, and and oh, suddenly the voter rolls don't work, so you all have to vote provisional. It is come down to this culture of easy deceit, so what can confront that culture of easy deceit is a culture of committed integrity. It's going to be a little harder than we thought. And by the way, I know that a lot of us who are practicing this are older because many of us have retired from the vocations that we worked so hard at for 30, 40 years. And now we're like, what do we identify? Americans, let's help our country. And that's why people can be committed to activism. It's difficult. I still have a job, too, and I can't devote all this time to it 24-7, but it's so important that I have to devote every minute I can. And I think a lot of Americans are waking up and going, oh, God, I have to do that. But it's fun. You'll meet the best people, so don't worry about that. Okay. I want to just point out in the beginning... Um, I'm not sure fraction magic was talked about, but Jan DeBoer talked about if you're going to rely on the scanners alone because you have the paper ballots, it's not your friend. And that's right, Jan. The reason being that culture of easy deceit, there was a convicted felon 
named Jeffrey Dean, who wrote the original software for global election management systems. That was, uh, Diebold used it, ESNS used it, it migrated to uh, Sequoia, and we think hard inter civic STD. It's a software transmitted disease. And it had accounting software for counting the votes. Now, in accounting and banking software, it's $1.50, it's $1.03. You know, there's pennies on the dollar in your bank account, or they're certainly in their vaults. But in one person, one vote, there's no pennies on the vote that makes us a little more than a dollar and a little less than a dollar. But that software from the beginning had the capacity of a user to go to the menu and change it to double numbers by which you could suddenly be 1.00. And what you could do then is use the latest polling to say, I think it would be believable if I won by, hmm, better make it 3.23%. And you could plug that in. And then the voting could change voters by party to have different weights and it would be done by computer, and you would have an almost perfect election. Once in a while, they'd have one vote left over. It was discovered by a guy who looked at it and found somebody hadn't closed the double number thing in the cast vote report, and so somebody got, you know, 2,031 point, 16 votes. And his eyes fell out of his head, and he began to explore. That was Benny Smith and Bev Harris. Okay, so it, Diebold originally had, in one movie I saw, their motto behind the guy who was speaking, and it said something like, to serve the greatest good is the noblest cause. And I thought, that is not an appropriate motto for democracy. Who determines what the greatest good is? Who determines what the noblest cause is? That's a kind of a personal moral decision. And the point about democracy is we have to trust one another to be making personal moral decisions and then casting our ballots according to conscience. One person, one vote. Everybody votes. That's, we still need the affirmative right in the Constitution, but that was not appropriate. And there it was on Diebold. How about the fact that Diebold became premier, ESNS tried to acquire premier, that was not allowed by the antitrust, that had to stop the Sequoia, now all under a Canadian company named Dominion Voting Systems. Again, I'm an actress, an artist. If I'm telling a story, Dominion is a giving a signal that is inappropriate for counting our votes. So to me, these are simply small cultural signals of what we're up against. I'm not saying they named it that nefariously, but there is a culture that we're fighting. Now, in acting, to make a scene believable, uh, to be able to do what you need to do on stage, you need an objective. You need to reduce it. What is my objective? And you have to go on stage pursuing that objective. In order to be sufficiently committed, you have to have an emotional preparation. My objective is, you know, I have to feel pride, or I have to shut that guy up, or I have to make the best cake anybody's ever made, and I have to emotionally prepare for that commitment so nothing can get in my way. And then, in a good drama, I go on stage and meet an obstacle. Well, I don't know what the objective necessarily is for the people counting our votes, our secretaries of state, our election officials, our legislators. They're very different objectives, and they're noble, I'm sure, and they're honest unto themselves. But it is, at this point, a collective, and nobody knows everything. We're the obstacle. Whatever the objective is, and you want to go in and count the votes and you want to do it easily on some software. Or you want to do it in enough time that you can't really spend any time really auditing everything or verifying everything. We have to be the obstacle. And we have to base our adversarial position on principle. And the principle is equality. You either believe we're equal and it's a democracy or you don't. Yeah. And if you're doing this work, you have to believe in equality. And that 
does make the administration of an election very difficult. You got to deal with languages, you've got to deal with how far people come to vote, you, how accessible it is. So I have great sympathy for our election officials and our legislators. But here's what we can't have. Naivete or a sense that this is good enough for now, even though it takes away a verification. No, we have to keep building verification and keep building towards the best possible verified election. So, um, it is now at the moment a little bit of unmanageable chaos in democracy. It really is. But I look at this room and I'm so glad that people are watching. Um, I am so glad that we have one of our legislators here who's going to tell us share with us, thank you Mr. Quirk, he's going to share with us how it happens that we end up on different sides of this issue. What, how does that happen and how can we, how can we get closer? Because we find out about this late. We can't always stop the train and that train can wreak destruction. And we do have to not be naive about the motives of people who don't give a damn about democracy. Don't give a damn. Suffrage, I often wondered where that came from. You know why? Medieval lords of the manor would dictate things. He would raise armies, he would send people, to, he would take cows and sheep and pigs, taxes, whatever. The medieval lords of the manor. And you know what? The men of the village started getting feisty because, you know, many of them were bastards of the Lord in the manor, and maybe they felt they had, they had to confront their daddy and say, you're my daddy, and I know it, and I don't want to pay the tax. So the lords of the manor invented suffrage, meaning they would let the men of the village okay their decisions. And that's pretty much what it was. They voted to suffer the Lord's decision, but at least they had a voice now. Wasn't that good of the dominion <laughs> who is in the mood of give us the greatest good is allowing us suffrage. So anyway, so much for suffrage, I think now. <laughs> we are not going to, we're, we're not going to suffer it, we're going to enjoy it. And we're going to have our votes counted as cast, and we are going to support each other's right to vote so that when we hear about suppression tactics, we are going to fight them. That's really all I have to say, and I want to thank everybody. There will be more. I know, uh, I think I'll leave it to the rest to explore down into the details, which is often my favorite thing to do, but today I'm just going to say thank you for being here. Remember Fraction Magic. That's why we can't trust the automated count. That fractional software allows them to wait. Republicans, Democrats, they can wait anything they want to get any outcome they want. And when they do it badly, as in John Ossoff, Georgia 6, where John Ossoff went over 50%, the machines went down for two hours. Because somebody had to come in and go, damn, we guessed too low. We have to up the percentage. So, ain't going to happen no more. We're going to have some of this activity going on, and we're going to reclaim democracy, hopefully not as adversaries, but all pulling together as Americans to improve the country and save the planet. Thank you.